What is up, my butter biscuits? Within today's video, we're going to be talking about Tati Westbrook as well as Laura Lee just a little bit. But specifically about Tati Westbrook, she actually just made a video where she was teasing the return of Tati Beauty. She basically created a list at the bottom of her video and she has people signing up for it so that way she can kind of do like a mass announcement. I do have to say this. I'm super curious to know how her brand is going to do. I know people loved her palette before. I actually purchased her, um, I, I forget exactly what the name is of them, but the like little pads. And you're so crazy because I loved that thing and I lost it like I literally lost it and I actually just redid my whole garage where I have my like little beauty setup space in there and I redid the whole thing went through all my drawers I can't find it for the life of me like I really like that sponge and or not sponge but I don't know like what it's considered like a little beauty puff I don't know it's something or another but honestly I really did like it and it's gone I don't know where I lost it but I wonder if she's gonna be coming out with those but I do specifically want to talk about with her eyeshadows I wonder if she's going to be having the same exact products she obviously said within her video oh you guys will be the first to know that Tati Beauty is making a comeback and I'm just like oh snap I thought basically Tati Beauty was going to be done with the whole lawsuit with her old business partner I do have to say this. I feel like after all this amount of time has come out, y'all, there is just so many beauty brands, especially if you guys are on TikTok. Loki, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Like, I love TikTok, but I'm so, like, I'm legitimately getting over it. I find myself actually being on YouTube more now than TikTok, which is weird because I really just love the algorithm of TikTok. Like, y'all, I love that on TikTok. You can watch a video and it'll say part one and then you'll scroll for like five, 10 minutes and then part two will pop up. Like, I think that is so good. Whatever they're doing with the algorithm, is genius and it knows exactly what you like to watch like y'all I am forever stuck on like pyramid videos I don't know why I'm so so obsessed with the pyramids every single time on my TikTok it pops up but in between that they'll put people's lives on there and there will be so many beauty brands so I just really wonder how Tati is going to do in the beauty space now because I feel like so much has changed because y'all it's been a hot minute since her brand has been out or actually been out of business I guess since their whole lawsuit um also I do want to ask this too have any of you guys tried Halo Beauty because that's her supplement brand if you guys didn't know but I'm just really curious to know how that is doing and how well the products are because I don't know why for some reason I'm always a little bit sketched out to try like supplements do you know what I mean I just feel like I don't know I feel like a lot of things are gimmicky in my personal opinion but make sure you guys let me know if you guys have tried that out we are going to be talking about Laura Lee too because she actually just did a podcast with Manny MUA and Manny MUA said within his podcast he's like oh I hate when people don't disclose their ads and it's so funny that Laura Lee has been called out before for not disclosing her ads so we're going to talk about that so if you guys are interested in those topics of course going to keep on watching I do have a new podcast out it'll be linked down below once again I feel like I'm gonna give this like little announcement you know just for I don't know maybe like the first month maybe the first two months so that what you guys know it's a hot mess it's literally me and my friend sitting on a couch having the most random conversations having a couple of drinks on a friday night and that's literally what it is so don't expect too much from it just letting you guys know it's low-key a hot mess but i have to be honest with you guys like watching it back when i go to edit it edit it edit it oh my gosh y'all yesterday i was like it was sunday fun day yesterday so i was partying and i have beer brain today i can't even like talk straight anyways going back to edit it though i literally bust up laughing like i just think it's so hilarious so if you guys want to see a hot mess podcast go ahead and check it out down below i'm working on the audio situation y'all but i'm just like woo, i can't afford to make investments in that channel right now so i'm like y'all i'm using some wireless mics that are crappy but whatever it is what it is anyways let me shut up and let's go ahead and get into the video so to start this off i did want to play a little tiny clip from her newest video where she did basically do a little bit of a teaser about the return of tati beauty so go ahead and check this out but if i did make a move you would be the first to know about it if tati beauty is coming back you will be the first to know about it so as y'all can see, she's kind of like alluding to the fact that Tati Beauty is going to be making a return. If you guys did not know, actually, they posted this on November 4th of 2021. The post is still up on Tati Beauty's Instagram page. It says Tati Beauty is now closed. Thank you for all your support and the amazing memories. Basically, like in a nutshell, I'm sure you guys already know the whole situation when it comes down to Tati. She had a lawsuit with her business partner. There were some things going on with them that basically the business partner kind of like turned and ended up suing them. So they actually had to stop the production of the brand it's so crazy though because in my personal opinion y'all this is why i'm so like when i wanted to come out with the beauty brand and this like seven years ago i was like so scared of like i don't want to partner up with anybody there was a couple people that i was working at at the time that were like oh i'm totally down to go into business with you and i was like mm, no i'm not gonna do that i just feel as soon as you start doing business with a friend and as soon as numbers start adding in people start to get really really greedy and i think that that business partner probably wanted a little bit more and tati's like wait hold up like no no no, no. 
I find it a little bit weird, though, at first, to be honest with you, like being that Tati is so successful, I'm surprised that she even had a business partner. But I do think when you partner up with certain people, they obviously can grow your brand a little bit more. Maybe Tati just wanted to focus on just the actual creative side of it and being the face of the brand. And maybe the other business partner was like really good with like accounting and a warehouse and fulfillment and all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? But I'm just like, y'all, I'm so sorry. But I think that this whole thing is low key kind of shady, because in my opinion, from everything that I had read online in the videos that I've watched online it seems like he was just a little bit greedy and wanted a little bit more and basically didn't want her to branch out and create any other businesses without him being tied to it too so that way he can make some money for it i do have to say this if she does come out with that textured neutrals palette again i want to get my hands on it you guys know for the longest time i was trying to get it and then it like sold out and then i was like oh my gosh as soon as it was like back in stock i was like is it too late to do a review but everyone and their mom literally loved that palette so i did want to try it out only because it did first of all i love the whole theory of it like i love how it has like basically say for example there's a black that has a matte one it has a satin one it has a shimmery one a glittery one like i love that whole concept because basically you have everything that you need you have your like you know nudes there but then also you have them in shimmer and you have them in matte and satin i really do like that concept i think it's a great concept i just don't know how her brand would do now if it would be super successful considering there's just so much competition out there if you guys have not watched my if you guys hear anything in the background i'm so sorry the little Roomba is going off i'm like why are you why are you on and why is there a Roomba in this like 150 square foot room i don't get it anyways if you guys have seen before in all my jeffree star videos so many people comment down below and just say you know what jeffree star's brand just isn't popping off the way that it used to i don't know if you guys have seen though especially on tiktok i really do think all you need is one viral product and you can make millions of dollars off that like say for example um i'm actually gonna film a video but i'm like whoa there's a lot of stuff to talk about about the whole michaela bronzer situation this guy that is like creating this whole like I don't know, you know, thing with Michaela. He like went viral from his video and sold out of his bronzers. Do you know what I mean? So I just feel like it just takes one thing to go viral and then bam, then you can be instantly successful. But I think it's really going to take a lot of work to stay successful. Do you know what I mean? I see a lot of these brands on Instagram or on TikTok that'll like go viral and people will buy up their product, but then it's just radio silent after that. Do you know what I mean? It's like one little viral product and then the business just doesn't stay afloat. I really do think in my personal opinion, and I know people always get crazy about like, oh, you're not the gatekeeper of the beauty community they were going crazy before i like manny mua over that situation saying like oh i feel like certain people shouldn't have brands i'm sorry but in my personal opinion there's just way too much oversaturation of brands and product and i'm like y'all it's just i don't know it's a bit much in my opinion but i do have to say this though tati did create something that was really cool and unique um Anyways, moving on, I did want to go ahead and talk briefly about the Laura Lee and Manny MUA um, podcast full coverage because they basically just did a Truth or Dare episode and Laura Lee, and you know what? I really wish, maybe I am just so shady. If you guys have watched my podcast, you guys know clearly like whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. Like, you know what I mean? That's just how I am. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Maybe I'm just shady. Maybe I'm just petty. Maybe I just don't care. If I was put on a truth or dare, I'm going to answer the question. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give no, like, little gray area, vague, like, answer. Like, I'm literally going to answer. She asked him, like, oh, who is your least favorite beauty influencer, I think, or influencer. I forget exactly what it was. And he didn't want to answer, but he said, you know what I'll say is the bitches that um, don't disclose their ads. And it's so funny because I actually was watching Dustin Daly's video, and he had pointed out that there has been a time, or a couple times, actually, that Laura Lee has not disclosed her ads. I'm going to play a clip of that in just a second, but I do want want to say going into this I find it to be very difficult with this whole FTC guideline because working with different brands honestly they do have different criteria like some brands will say say for example like the last uh, sponsorship that I've done which by the way y'all just throwing this out there if you guys ever get the opportunity to work with Amazon slash audible Oh my God, like literally I would work with them 5,000 times over again. It was so easy, such a breeze. They were so nice, so friendly, so helpful. They made everything like you have to do this, this, and this. If you guys see that sponsored video before, I actually did the sponsorship on um, the rise and the fall of Morphe. They said during the um, uh, sponsored portion, you do have to say that it is an ad, put it on the screen, put it in the description box, and you have to verbally say it. Like I had to do all of those things. So that way, obviously there couldn't be any FTC complaints, but I have seen before, for example, like um, I worked with, oh my gosh, this was years ago. I'm talking about like five, six years ago. I worked with that perfume. 
Scentbird, I think it's called. I forget the name of it, but basically they just said within the video, you just say, oh, this is sponsored or you just have to put it within the description box. Well, within one of Laura Lee's videos, she basically did a haul and then in the description box, it says, thank you for partnering with me on today's video. So I'm like, why is it that some brands tell you different things? Like, I don't get it because I feel like if the FTC has guidelines then you just have to follow those guidelines and that's just it. Also, I think that it sucks too because obviously we've come to a place within seeing so many people sponsor and so many people getting paid that a lot of people are really apprehensive to say that they are doing a partnership or a sponsorship because then they automatically think that their viewers are going to think that they're lying do you know what i mean when it's like crazy because say for example like i know obviously like with audible like uh, the sponsorship that i did with them it's kind of like it's not an actual product that you're using on a daily basis. Do you know what? Well, not, you know what I mean? It's not like a makeup product, like a lipstick right here. Like, oh my God, it's obviously a service basically, let's just say. So I feel like it is a little bit different with that, but it's actually a product that I like. Do you know what I mean? It's actually a product that I use. So I'm like, I don't understand, especially with big influencers, what the deal is with disclosing. Cause I feel like y'all at the end of the day, if you genuinely love the product then you're keeping it real and you're just getting paid for that. And that's just it. Do you know what I mean? Anyways, go ahead and check out this clip right here. Who? to you is the most annoying influencer <laughs> name them name them name them name them name them okay Sunstrack. Um, so <laughs> name them <laughs> <laughs> okay so um in order to avoid drama i want drama it's been a minute <sighs> laura we okay you know what do you know do you know who annoys me who it's the bitches on TikTok. I will say bitches. I'm not going to lie. Who do sponsorships without disclosing. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I just got some new stuff in from White Fox. And I thought we would just do a good old White Fox haul. You guys know I love White Fox. But they're having a huge Black Friday sale. And they're having 30% off. So you guys can use my discount code Laura Lee to get 30% off site-wide on White Fox for Black Friday. They also have Afterpay available for all US, Australian, and New Zealand customers. So as y'all can see, he was basically saying he just doesn't like people that don't disclose their ads, which I do have to say, in my opinion, I feel like Manny Amway does a great job at disclosing his ads. I always see it like he'll have the hashtag partnered and he'll say it. You know what I mean? I think he does a good job at it, but I do think Laura Lee has dropped the ball before, but I'm telling you in my personal opinion, I just think a lot of influencers really get scared to do that because I think that they have this, you know, um, thought in their mind that, oh, if I say that this is sponsored, they're going to think that I'm fake and they're going to disengage with the video and they're going to click off of it and not watch it and obviously when you do a sponsorship you want people to watch the video so that way that brand is enticed to work with you some more do you know what i mean so i do understand like where they're coming from in that aspect but it's like at the end of the day influencers got to make money this is obviously a job and i feel like people just got to keep it real my whole thing too and my takeaway from this situation i've said this before about michaela is i get irritated with big influencers like laura lee like laura lee is a big influencer she can like cherry pick her opportunity she can say for example like i think this um clip that dustin daly had put in his video she was working with um a clothing brand right say for example if she really didn't like that brand she could hit up so many other brands and they're going to want to work with her i've said this before with michaela like i don't know why for some reason when michaela does her her um sponsorships like girl like why are you lying about things like you can literally pick any brand that you want to work with like y'all i would love to get sponsored by mac you guys know that i obviously worked at mac for so long like i have so many mac core products that i love and still purchase till this day so if i were to get sponsored with them or say, for example, if I was to ever get like popular, like if I had millions of followers, I could DM Mac, I could hit up their representatives and say, hey, I really want to work with you guys. And they're going to say, yeah, obviously, because they know, oh, okay, you have X amount of views, X amount of viewers, blah, 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 blah. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like these massive celebrities or like celebrity influencers can really cherry pick who they want to work with. So I think that that sucks, but I just thought that was a little bit ironic. Anyways, make sure you guys let me know your thoughts and opinions about that. Also, make sure you guys let me know about Tati Beauty. What do you guys think moving forward? What would you want to see from the brand? Do you guys want to get the Texture Neutrals palette back? If she does come out with like a updated version of it or like a part two type of version of it, I definitely will do a review of it because I really did like her little puff, but... I didn't get my hands on the palette, but everyone and their mom love that palette. So if she does come out with something good, I will definitely be doing a review of it. Hopefully it comes out pretty soon though. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm kind of like a little bit nervous for her. Cause I think like, Ooh, girl, the game has changed so much within the past few years now. And it's like almost, you know, it's going on three years since her brand has been closed down. So I'm curious to see where things go, but make sure you guys let me know your thoughts and opinions about everything. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out girl scout.